Hey guys, welcome to Science with Miss McBride. So the first week in science, we really just worked on our All About Me Google Slides that really did not work for us technology-wise. A few of us were able to get it done. So the other, the other students or the other scholars, you know, we verbally talked about what our favorite things was and things of that nature. We just couldn't get Google to work with us. So we moved ahead a little bit and we moved into our second week of science and we'll just go straight into that today. So this really just one really big, big topic about science that we've done. Okay, so let's get straight into it, okay? So here we are in science, and we take science notes the same way we take ELA math notes. We open up with our lesson standard and lesson target and any key vocabulary that Ms. McBride wants us to jot down. And we'll go back to that at the end of the presentation to make sure that your notes are like my notes. When I say I write, you write. Very good. So this week we're talking about the five regions and rivers of Georgia. Here we go. We have the Plateau, the Ridge Valley, Blue, Mountain, Mount, Blue Ridge Mountains, Piedmont, and the Coastal Plains. We have one, two, three, four, five regions in Georgia. Okay? And there's our lesson standard. S3L1. Write that down. And I don't want you to write down all the obtaining. By the way, can you get them in I just want you to write S3L1 and put Blue Ridge Mountains, Piedmont, Coastal Plains, Valley and Ridge and Appalachian Plateau. Great. Now here's our lesson target. Every single word in your science notes. Repeat after me. I can describe features of the Piedmont habitat by asking questions and constructing an explanation and using evidence to understand habitats in the Georgia geographic regions. Perfect. Here's our key vocabulary. We have one, two, three, four, five key vocabulary words. The first one is region and area. So we have five regions of Georgia. So we have five areas of Georgia, okay? Environment, which is our surroundings. Ecosystem is made up of all the living and non-living things in an area, okay? Then there's habitat. The place or type of place where a plant or animal naturally lives or grows. And then hibernate, which is in sleeping or resting state. Write that down. Just to expand a little bit about ecosystem and habitat, let's bring that down to the real world, okay? Your room is your habitat. When you look around, where you are, my office is my habitat. It has everything I need to live and grow right now. But your house is your ecosystem because you need parts of the house to live, okay? So they go together. The habitat and the ecosystem go together. An animal whose habitat is used to something by the coast would not survive in a habitat with an ecosystem in the north, okay, guys? Good. Now, Georgia is divided or split into five different regions, okay? Each region has its own unique landform system that makes up the area okay now we discussed in class how can we differentiate between plants and animals found within Georgia's geographical regions we also discussed the adaptations we talked about this about camouflage hibernation and the different types of adaptations animals take to survive in their habitats okay we even went into the names of Okay, but for this week, just this is all we need to know. Now, Georgia is located in the southeast corner of the United States. Georgia was named after King George II. Over 10 million people live in Georgia today. Georgia is 59,425 square miles, and our nickname is the Peach State. The fourth region is the Piedmont region, and that's located in the central part of the state. Now, that's a big word, central. Central means center or middle. So when you hear central, we're talking about the middle. We're talking about the center. So when we get back to class and I say, hey, come to the central part of the room, I mean, come to the center, okay? And that's where the Piedmont is located. And that makes up about 30% of the state land. Let's look at our map over here. Am I pointing right? You'll see the Piedmont is in the central, and it's the second largest uh, area of mass that we have. Coastal Plain is the largest. 
and there's the fall line. Piedmont is made up of gently rolling hills. As you ride around Atlanta, we go up and down. We don't go, go up and down. Very gently roll. The capital is Atlanta, and that's in the Piedmont. And mostly everyone lives in the Piedmont area. I mean, it's the metropolitan area. That's your DeKalb, Fulton, Clayton, Fayette count. That's your Piedmont, and most of us live in that area. When you walk outside, you're in the Piedmont. We're in the Piedmont. Our school's in the Piedmont. Cool, right? So here's some photos of the Piedmont in Central Florida. In Central Georgia, I'm sorry. I'm from Florida, not Georgia. And there's our downtown Atlanta. So just to recap before we move on just a little bit. Central Georgia, Piedmont, rolling hills, 30% of Georgia, capital city of Atlanta. And there are lots of people. Look, they're taking notes. Good job. Let's expand a little bit on the Piedmont and let's get specifically back into what lives in the Piedmont, okay? And this is still all in alignment with our lesson standard, okay? But now we're digging deeper. We're only going to talk about the Piedmont area, okay? And it's the fourth region, central and 30% of the state's land. Now let's talk about the habitat. A habitat is a place where animal and plants live. Habitats provide food, water, and shelter for animals. Habitats found in Georgia exist in the mountains, rivers, lakes, marshes, swamps, and coastal areas. Each environment provides different habitats for all types of plants and animals. So you'll find different animals in the, in the plateau, different animals in the coastal ridges, different animals here in the Piedmont. Every place is different because every habitat and ecosystem is different. Okay? And in class, we were able to answer some of these. We were able to create a question, define habitat, and we pulled that information directly from the reading. Okay, you don't have to wonder. It's right there in the reading. So good readers reread. You just go back and read. Well, we discussed this in class. There are some plants and animals in the Piedmont region, all accustomed to the different ecosystems. Take a moment to read that. And here's some pictures of the animals that live there. So there's a raccoon, there's a deer, and there's a fox. We see deer all the time. I see deers all the time. I don't see a lot of raccoons. I see a lot of armadillos, but I do see a lot of deer. And as a gardener, I don't want to see them because they come and they eat the hood. And here's some more animals and birds. Very beautiful, very beautiful. Mm -hmm. I've seen some squirrel. Everybody's seen a squirrel. There's a little some bunnies in my neighborhood. We've all seen different type of birds. I haven't seen any bats. And animals have different adaptations as if they go into the different ecosystems, okay? They have wet feet, and they have fur, thicker fur, lighter fur, and camouflage, and sharp tooth, and they long claws for those different ecosystem habitats so they can survive. Plants have ad ad adaptations, okay? And plants can survive hot summers and cold winters, okay? Aggressive growing plants with long vines are called kudzus. And trees have thick bark to protect against cold winters, insects, and animal invasions, okay? Thick bark also protects against trees dying out, and deciduous trees drop leaves and fall to minimize water loss. And here are some type of plants that you'll find in the Piedmont. Dogwood Festival. Here's the Piedmont plants. We all know that dogwood tree. And we all know kudzu. Go by Edgewood. It's full of it. And that's all that we want to talk about as far as the Piedmont. So this week, that was our focus, okay? And for your assignment, we had to answer a couple of questions about the Piedmont. And that is located in your Thursday, August the 20th. Excuse me. Uh, Google Classwork, as you can see here. And these are the questions that you have to answer based on the reading, okay? Based on the reading, you have to answer these questions. Easy peasy. And that's it for social studies this week. We watched a couple of videos. We listened and read a story. So we did a lot more. But this is the core of it. If you have any questions, let me know.